Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach. Fun video for you today. I'm gonna to show you exactly how to go through, understand how to use this Life Pack monitor. Life Pack is one of the most common uh, cardiac monitors we find EMS. Let's learn how to use it. Let's learn what it's all about, what's in here. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach. I'm super excited to show you this video. Um, I have a LifePak 12. Uh, I'm gonna go through and show you uh, exactly how to use it and like what the gear is. The LifePak 15 is one of the most popular uh, life packs, heart monitors out there that you'll see. If you're watching this right now, let's say you're a brand new EMT and your paramedic throws you the life pack and says, hey, do this, do that. Well, how do we know what to do, right? Without knowing, I'm gonna show you right now in this video. So the first thing is how do we turn the, the monitor on? Click on, and it'll light up. Now, I don't know if you can see it here, but you have two uh, batteries here, so I'm gonna show you just the, the, main, the main stays. If I flip this thing around, I'm gonna flip it around here, okay? Here we go. Right back here, if I go like this, there are the batteries right here. So you just go like that. You can see the battery levels. There are two batteries, okay? So now I'm gonna flip this around to the other side, the front side. So that's the, okay, the batteries. So you got, oh, change the batteries. That, we solved that problem, okay? Now, the actual uh, printer paper, I'm gonna open this up, is right in here, okay? So, you can see here, this is your EKG paper. I'm just gonna move it out a little bit just so you can see it, okay? I'm gonna just close that back up. We close it by going like this pushing it down, and then here's our EKG paper. If I had this hooked up to a simulator, I could just print it, and it should be right here. And I would go ahead and print my EKG, so print. Now, how do I stop this? I just hit print again, it stops it. Now, how do I actually uh, go ahead and remove this? Well, you wanna go at a little bit of an angle and pull down so it's like this. That's how you do it, and you have a clean, EKG there, okay, in this case it's not hooked up to anybody, but you get the point. So that's that. Now, what about all these pockets? Let's talk about the pockets. Now I've set this up like most people usually set it up. I'm just gonna sh give, you, give you an idea. So the first thing here is this pocket where we have our, our EKG, okay? Our EKG wires, if you will. So usually in here you have a blood pressure cuff. Now I have a manual cuff here, I don't have an actual automatic cuff for this, but the blood pressure cuff that hooks into right here, it says NIBP, goes, they would go click in there and you would see it pop up on the screen. You take the blood pressure by clicking this and it will do the blood pressure on the patient on the monitor. Now I have a manual cuff in here just for fun here, okay? Now, if we go here, remembering this, these are our EKG wires, okay? Now what's in the monitor to remember which lead a lead is a view of the heart. So these are also called leads. So a lead is a view of the heart. It's another way of saying it, okay? Some people call these EKG wires for slang. Okay, I'm just giving you an idea, okay? Now here's the deal. See all these colors? We got green, red, we got a white and black. Here's a mnemonic. So we think about white right. So white goes on the right, okay? We have smoke over fire. So we have black over the red, and then green as the ground, like grass is green, over here, okay? Best place to put the, uh, the actual stickers, if you will, okay? Right in here on humans, which you'll see even on me here, there's no hair here, okay? So we're talking about perfect, proper placement here, here, and then down on the ankles would be perfect placement. The problem is in the ambulance, everyone moves around like this, okay? <laughs> So what we want to do is we want to put the wires more up here on, on the, the humoral heads. We can go as far as the humoral heads here. It's a little more stable. People are moving their hands like this. They're moving around. This stays pretty stable, okay? And then you just put it down on the ankle, down by the calf. You're cool with that. Now, these wires here I'm going to show you, okay? I'm going to unhinge some of these. If I pop this open, okay? See the opening, okay? 
I can take these wires here. You can see here, I'm going to open this up. These are our 12 lead EKG wires, okay? So I'm just going to show you. I'm going to just open this up. There we go. So you can see these are all different kind of colors, okay, where we're going to place 12 lead EKG. Now, the approximate location, this is give you an idea of these, and you can look at them when you're actually out on the road, okay? So I'll show you here. So V1 right here goes approximately over here, okay? V2, V4, V6, which is mid axillary, V5, anterior axillary. V3 goes in between V2 and V4, right in between. So that's the approximate locations, all right? I'll try to put something on the screen here to show you the exact locations, okay? But this is what we're talking about, the 12 lead EKG. We gotta put these on, these are the, these are the chest leads. Okay. These actually, before I put this away, these actually connect like this. So we go like this and we connect this right here. We go like that. It's connected. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to show you. We're going to take this other end because these are the wires that are actually on the patient. I'm going to move them over here. We take this right here, this end piece, and we can see right here we stick it into the monitor. Okay. Now if we had a patient here, we would actually put these electrodes and stickers, if you will, on these leads, okay? So I'm gonna show you just how to do that. So over here I have EKG stickers, here they are. I'm not gonna do every one, of course, but here is an example of one. And I'm just gonna take a lead here, like that, show you. Then you just go like this, and see the back piece? And I just take it off, and I would stick it on the patient. This is V3, but just to give you an example, it would not, would not go here, I'm just showing you. Yeah, I'd stick it on, and there you go. See, no hair there, and I just take it off. Ready to take it off? Cool, okay. So our next step here, we went through the EKG leads. I just wanna show you what's commonly over here. Now, you can see here, the SBO2 connection is right here on the monitor, and it would connect, and again, show here on the screen. Now. You'll find sometimes that's, that isn't available, okay? There is here your finger pull socks. To give you an idea, the finger pull socks goes like this on your patient, and that's how it works, okay? Just to give you an idea. The pull sock symmetry usually is placed over here, okay? And I'm, this is how I set up my monitor, but everyone has their own method. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is, if you turn this off for a second, is we're going to go over here. I'm going to pop open these. What's in here? Now see this black piece right here? This black piece, I'm gonna turn the monitor over a little bit. This black piece right here is actually, it's, it works pretty cool. It's right underneath this section right here, okay? Which is a section for defib, pacemaking, cardioversion, potentially we're gonna shock the patient, okay? So it's all underneath it. That's the cord to the pads to do the shocking, okay? So the actual cord is right here. I'm gonna show you all this. Okay, so here's our cord, so you can see it, okay. Now I'm going to take, okay, here are the pads, okay, and we can actually take the pads, we can actually go ahead and connect them to the monitor, okay. So I'm going to go uh, grab a dummy that I have, and I'm going to show you down below the connection. Let me show you that. So here's our, our dummy, you can see our, our pads are connected. So now all we're going to do is take the end of this, which you'll see here, okay? Take our, our black piece here from the monitor. You can see there's uh, two arrows. We can see it here, but there's two arrows. You want to match the arrows up, so let's go ahead and match them up. And then we're connected, okay? And now we are good to go. So now we have our monitor connected, and we can do over here. So let me show you what that looks like, okay? Now these pads are expired, so it may not come up here on the monitor but I'm just gonna turn it on for you, just to show you an idea, okay? So now I'm just gonna show you, just for an example, what we have here. So on this side here, we have the energy select. So we can move up and down and energy select. We can move up and down, and we can choose the energy that we want, right? So let's say you want to uh, cardiovert a patient at 100 joules. We do 100 joules, we hit charge, okay? Now let's say here, connect electrodes. These, are, these have been on this dummy for probably like half a year now, so it's not gonna work, but that's okay. We would charge, it would charge up, and then we'd go ahead and actually 
we hit shock, okay? And I'll try by the end of this video, show you, you can hear the charging and shocking. So stay tuned for that. I'll try to get it hooked up for you, okay? Now down below here, we have the sync button for a synchronized cardio version. So before we do synchronized cardio version, we need to hit this button, hit sync, to sync up for synchronized cardio version. Then we would charge, then we would shock. With defibrillation, all we need to do is select the energy, hit charge, and then go ahead and shock the patient. Okay. Now with the pacer, which is down here, it's actually the pacer, we hit pacer, and then what we do is we go ahead and choose the rate, and then actually go ahead and the current, and then go ahead and pace the patient. Okay. Now by hitting lead, I can go here and actually check out different leads and different views of the heart. Okay. Now those are connected right now, just to give you an example. Okay. Now the last thing here that we have is options. So under the options tab, we can see other patients. We can go back to patient archives. We can do an actual user test of the device itself, which is pretty cool. We can change the date and time, all that good stuff over in options. You can play around with that, okay? If you hit the event button, which I'll show you here, the event button, you can actually say, okay, in timestamp on the actual summary, you can print out. I can, let's say I hit, click this right now and I hit CPR, right? I can say here, okay, CPR was at that time. Now let's say we're gonna give epinephrine, I can go, I right, do epinephrine. All we do here, if we're gonna do a 12 lead EKG, by the way, is we, once we have the, the leads on, we hit 12 lead, and then it'll ask for the patient's male or female, and then it'll ask um, what the age of the patient is, we hit, you know, hit here, enter, enter, and then we move on, and we'll make sure that the patient is staying still while it's getting the EKG, best that you can, and it will then print out the EKG for you. Okay, now let's go to the back. I'm gonna move this dummy, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so now we have the back of the monitor and the side. So our right side here, something else you'll see commonly inside the heart monitor too, is actually a glucometer. So remember, this is how we gotta get a blood glucose level on our patient. And just to give you an idea, I'm just gonna open it up on the, the traditional things you'll find in here. For example, you're gonna obviously find a device to actually go ahead and pierce the skin. You're gonna find the glucometer itself, right? You're going to find, you know, the actual lancets. You're gonna find test strips, right? Alcohol prep pads would be in there too, okay, to give you an idea. I like to put it right over here on, on the side with an extra pack of electrodes, just to give you an idea how that works. Now up in here, okay, and then by the way, let me know in the comments, if you're a medic, how do you set up your monitor? Is it similar to this one? Is it, is it different? Let me know. Um, in here, you'd have, whether you have end tidal CO2. This right here is the end tidal CO2 actually for an intubation um, I have right here, okay? Now you would have, for example, there's two sides. So you would have two nasal end tidal, and then you have uh, a nasal end tidal for intubation, you know, two on, I like to have two and two. That usually is pretty good, okay? Now back here, I'm gonna pop this open. This is where you'd keep extra batteries. Yeah, I got two batteries charging right now in the charging port. Um, but I also keep back here all extra electrodes, okay? So yes, I am that guy, extra electrodes. You wanna be sure that you are ready to go, okay? Now I'm gonna flip this thing around one more time and I'm gonna show you, just so you have an understanding of what it's like. I'm gonna get the uh, simulator out and I'm gonna show you exactly what it's like uh, just the sounds you'll hear when the monitor's charging and that stuff. Let me get the uh, simulator set up, be right back. Okay, now this right here is the exact simulator that you would use in a paramedic school attached to a life pack. I actually have it, I'm gonna show you here kind of what it all looks like. Now, it can't be hard to see with the lights and I understand that, but I just wanna let you know here that I actually now, I can, just, I can actually go through this properly. Like it's hooked up to a real patient. Okay, so I have pat, I can do paddle leads. I can hit lead here. I can go all the way down to two, three and AVF. I can have that lead. Now, I just wanna show you here and just print off the simulator. So this is actually normal sinus rhythm. Okay, I'm gonna print it out for you. Just to show you kind of what a, a normal rhythm would look like, okay? So here we go. So we hit print. Now, you remember the cue. Pull from the side. There it is, okay? You know if you're experienced or not and how you rip your paper, okay? <laughs> so there it is. Okay, so that is actually normal science rhythm. Okay, and that's what it looks like. Now, up in the top here, I have the heart rate, the time. It's pretty cool, right? Different, the different views of the heart. I love it, okay? That's a rhythm strip. I'm gonna put it here. Now, just to give you 
an example. I'm going to put this patient, which I have right here, I'm going to put the patient into, let me find SVT, there it is. So now what we're going to do is we got to synchronize cardio versus SVT, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. We're going to synchronize cardio over. So I'm going to hit sync button first. Okay, I hit sync. It's going to match up with my QRSs. Okay, now I'm going to do energy select. I'm going to move down, go to 100 joules. Okay, now here's the charge. Here it comes. Here's the charge. There's your noise. You're going to hear. Okay, I'm clear. You're clear. Everybody clear and shocking. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Now we've delivered the energy and it'll print it out. Now I'm going to just give you another idea. Let's say we're in, v we have a cardiac arrest and we're in VF. So now what do we do? Okay. Well, well now we're going to defib the patient. So to defib the patient, energy select, we're going to go to 200 joules. Okay. Now no sinking here. This is cardiac arrest VFib. So we're going to hit charge. Okay. I'm clear. You're clear. Everybody clear. And three, two, one, shocking. Okay, and again, energy delivered. We shocked the patient, okay? Now, it would print this out as the printer's well backed up. Now, let's say we want to pace this patient. I'm gonna put this patient in a third degree heart block. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Wait, so it gets there. All right, so here's how we pace the patient. So first we hit pacer. Okay. Now we first got to choose the rate. So what rate do you want this pacemaker to be at? Be at? Okay. Now I'm just going to go for, for sake of argument, let's just go to 80. So I'm going to hit the button 80. Okay. Now the, I need the current of energy. So what we want to do is we need to get what's called a mechanical and electrical capture. So what that means is the pulse has to match the monitor. Get it? Mechanical, electrical, the pulse, the monitor. So we just move, we can move from here, or I can go from here, okay? So I'm gonna go up in energy until, well, my patient, I have a mechanical and electrical, which is here and here, your patient and the monitor, match up. So I'm just gonna keep moving it along until I see that the patient's actually being paced. Let's move along. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, let me take a look at it. Now this is a simulator, but now I'm just gonna show you, to give you an idea, I'm gonna actually go ahead and print out the uh, paste rhythm, just to, show you what it, just to show you what it looks like, okay? So this is what a pacemaker will actually look like. So let me just show you here. Here we go. If I can do it right. There we go. So you can see here, I hope you can see it, the actual pacer spikes right here. See the pacer spikes? So the pacer spikes, the monitor will actually put these little arrows where the pacer spikes are. Okay, pretty cool. All right. So there we have our paste. Okay. Now, what else do we have here? Well, I'm going to put this patient into VF. Now, we don't really use this too much, but I'll just give you an example. This is a little, a little uh, CPR section. So I'm going to actually get this patient off the pacemaker. We're now in VF again. Now I'm going to show you here where it says analyze. So let's do advisory. Okay, advisory modes monitoring. We're going to analyze. Just show you what it Analyzing does. Analyzing now. Stand clear. It will actually be an AED as well. Shock advised. Stand clear. Push to shock. Clear all clear. Shock. Start CPR. Right, and then we'll have you actually lead you in CPR. Pretty cool. So my friends, that was the overview of this heart monitor here. I uh, hope you enjoy it. And let me know in the comments down below how you set up your life pack. I got one more message for you. I remember, like you, being a new provider, being a new student, being a new EMT. That's why I want to create this video to show you like how to use this life pack but I have another tool for you as well. If you want to get really good and confident out on the road, if you want to get through school, if you want to get through exams, you want to prep the right way, you want to be the best that you can be inside of EMS, hit the first link in the description down below. I'll give you a lifetime access to my best content inside my video vault. This is what students use to prepare for school, 
prepare for out on the job, and prepare for national registry. Click the link down below. Hope you enjoyed the fun here. I'll see you inside. Hit the link down below and I'll see you in the next video. Don't waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. You take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple past the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. I took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national, and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.